Did you know the entire plot of Malignant is right there in the opening credits, but you were too stupid to notice? Let's start with the credits themselves. Annabelle Wallace is the actress who plays the protag, Madison Mitchell. All of the repeated letters in her name, that is the N's, the L's, and the other L's, start as one letter, then divide into two. This process mirrors the cell division that we later learn occurred to create the parasitic twin, Gabriel. The actual footage shown during the title sequence also spoils the movie if you can comprehend it. It's assumed that the surgery clips we're seeing are the procedure on Gabriel mentioned in the opening, but stopping at just the right moment shows that the patient name is Emily May, which we later learn is Madison. Madison's real name. A medical diagram shows a girl with eyes looking in different directions as a result of the craniopagus, and Emily's file mentions sleepwalking, hallucinations, and waking dreams, all of which are eventually attributed to Gabriel hijacking her brain. We're starting to suspect that Gabriel can somehow access the regions of the brain that process visual stimuli and make Emily see what he wants her to see. This would explain her recent claims of hallucinations and waking dreams. Another page adds malnourishment to her list of symptoms. We come to find out that Gabriel was essentially feeding off of her fetuses to build himself back up. He was the hidden cause of all of her miscarriages. We even see brain scans that seem to highlight the tumor on the backside of her head, and this file describes craniofacial features, including two fully formed faces, while making a comparison to Janus cats, a rare condition in cats that causes them to be born with two faces. The name was inspired by Janus, the Roman god of past and future, who is depicted as having two faces, one looking into the past and one to the future. Toward the end of the title sequence, a page in this binder spells out the condition of Craniopagus parasiticus, which is the type of parasitic twinning that has bound Madison and Gabriel to share one brain. There are many other clues about Malignant's terrifying twist nested throughout the entire movie, and many other things you might have missed. To learn the meaning behind the hidden symbol on Detective Shaw's computer screen, the clue hidden in the movie's soundtrack, meanings behind character names, and more, stick around to the end of this video. Sponsored by MGM Slots Live. Welcome to Things You Missed. In 2016, director James Wan released The Conjuring 2, his fourth demonic possession movie. After this, he would take a little break from the horror genre, but when he came back, he wanted to do something new. He came back with an original concept, developed by his wife, actress slash writer-producer Ingrid Bisu, who had a longtime fascination with teratomes and parasitic twins. Ingrid also has a character in this movie named CST Winnie. I believe CST stands for Crime Scene Technician. She's the one doing the hands-on investigating, and she's clearly passionate about her job. This would reflect her interest in the idea of a villainous parasitic twin in real life. Her character also has a crush on the Asian detective. Uh oh, here comes Miss Lonely Heart. Take your claw. Winning? You have to believe that this character represents James Wan, the head of the investigation, the director of the movie. James wanted to get back to his roots with a police procedural serial crime movie like his breakout hit Saw, while also expanding into new territory. There's a bit of mystery, there's a bit of creature feature monster aspect to it, there's a serial killer aspect to it. He's also talked about the influence of Italian giallo horror films like The Nightmares of Dario Argento and the body horror stylings of David Cronenberg. I'll get into some more specific examples when we get into the things you missed. So let's get into the things you... Why do we do this? Why do we always open the show this way? The opening company logos are altered to look like we're watching them on an old CRT monitor. This makes them match the video diaries from the Simeon Research Facility, where we learn about Madison and Gabriel's past, but also might be a reference to what James Wan might have seen while watching old Giallo films on TV as a teenager in the 1990s. The first diary we see is from Emily and Gabriel's doctor, Florence Weaver, and she has a bust of a man with an exposed brain. This is likely for demonstration purposes, but it also serves as a precursor to Gabriel, who emerges by poking through Madison's skull. Also seen on the shelf is her Medical Research Association Award, which later becomes Gabriel's main weapon. It's originally a large spike surrounded by a tapering double snake helix and angelic wings. The helix, when viewed from above, creates a spiral, a symbol that's become an element of James Wan's auteur as a director. I also noticed a similar tapering helix on the plants outside of Dr. Gregory's apartment shortly before he's taken out by Gabriel. Gabriel also makes his lair in the attic, and we enter it via a big spiraling camera movement as Gabriel makes modifications to this trophy. This movement is also something we've seen before in Wan's work, like this shot in Saw or this shot in Dead Silence. After removing the snakes, Gabriel keeps the angelic wings, effectively serving as a hilt for his new weapon. This ties into a theme that Madison talks about much later on, the idea that Gabriel is essentially a demon in hiding. The name Gabriel comes from the biblical messenger angel Gabriel. I imagine it was chosen to hide his true evil nature. He pretends to be nice. But 
but he's the devil. Gabriel likes to position himself in high places. I already talked about the attic, but he also attacks Serena from above and he attacks Shaw from above on multiple occasions. But when he's discovered and chased, he retreats to where he's most at home, the Seattle Underground, representative of hell. It is also the basement of the research facility where Sydney discovers the files containing the truth about Gabriel, where the graffiti makes the analogy a little bit more obvious. The idea that Gabriel is a devil posing as an angel is also reflected in the camera work. Many of the attacks feature this top-down view on the victim. The house even contains stained glass window artwork, something we've certainly seen before in residential houses, but something you're more likely to associate with a church. The biblical Gabriel was a messenger angel who communicated with the prophet Daniel to explain his visions. Malignant's Gabriel literally gives Madison visions and communicates with her via TVs and radio. Gabriel's mother, Serena, might have predicted his true nature if she had listened to her parents. In one of the tapes, she explains her mom and dad were religious and she saw the teen pregnancy as a transgression against God. Finally, the police gather information on Serena and if you look carefully, her social security number begins with 666, the number of the devil. After the intro with Dr. Weaver, we meet the current day Emily May, who now goes by Madison Mitchell. She has a child of her own on the way, but when Gabriel comes back into her life, we can spot even more secrets. Thank you MGM Slots Live for sponsoring this video. Download link is in the description. MGM Slots Live brings the excitement of Las Vegas casinos straight to the palm of your hand, wherever you are in the world. The game features loyalty points, so the more you play, the more you collect. With these points, you can redeem real life rewards like free hotel rooms, discounted meals, and show tickets at any MGM Resorts property and many other partners around the world. You can also play live slot and bingo tournaments against other players from around the world, and its top games include Piggy Pop, Flashy Cash, Wicked Fortunes, and The Win Zone. Download MGM Slots Live using the link in the description or scan the QR code right here on your screen. Let's face it, you're gonna use the link in the description and get 10 million free chips if you're a new player. Available in the iOS App Store and Google Play. It's that easy. Just click the link. <laughs> click the link. Just click the link in the description to go to the landing page and I'll see you in the game. Madison gets home to find her husband Derek watching a UFC match on TV, which depicts a fighter punching his opponent on the back of the head. This is a foreshadowing of the incident that would soon occur, where Derek pushes his wife into a wall and she cracks open the back of her head, allowing Gabriel to surface. There are a couple instances in the movie of butterfly motifs, like the wallpaper at the Simeon facility and Sydney's outfit when she visits Madison in the hospital. A butterfly takes flight only after coming out of its cocoon. It kind of reminds me of the image of Gabriel poking his head out of the back of Madison's skull. It's hard to say if that was intentional. The analogy isn't perfect because Gabriel could never take flight and leave Madison's body because he's just a parasite. He needs her to survive. But there are some more concrete clues about who and what Gabriel really is. When he strikes Derek, if you're paying close attention, you'll notice that his hand is upside down from what you'd expect. Try it right now. Take your right hand and do a nice overhead smack with your fingers pointing down. Unless you're extremely flexible, this will feel very unnatural. That's because this is actually the left hand going behind the back. The police do pick up on this, but they have a different theory about how it was achieved. No fingerprints, but all the hand patterns are upside down, like our perp was hanging from the ceiling. They also note that there was no forced entry into the house because Gabriel was already inside. Derek's head is twisted around 180 degrees, causing his face to essentially look backwards, just like Gabriel. He's fixing his victims to look like him. We also see him do this at the jail, where one of the victim's arms is pulled back in the opposite direction of the joint, and at the police station where an officer's limbs are bent back the wrong way. Madison tries to cope by saying, It's all in my head. It's all in my head. She is correct, but it's not her imagination. It's literally in the back of her head. You know who I am. Even if they say I'm only in your head. When she was young, the surgeons cut out as much of the cancer as possible, only leaving what was necessary for Madison to survive. The rest of Gabriel was buried under her skull. The way the tour guide describes old Seattle seems symbolic of what happened to Gabriel. This is a tour of old Seattle, buried underneath here like a time capsule of a bygone era. Of course, after her skull is cracked open, Gabriel's face can push its way back to the surface, which may be the inspiration for the wording of this line by Detective Moss. I read about one more sick kid, my brain's gonna push out my eyeballs. I mentioned that Gabriel is able to essentially hijack Madison's brain and make her see visions of the crimes that he commits when he's in control. In her hallucinations, Gabriel often emerges from the backside of her head, first during the death scene of Dr. Fields, then again when Gabriel comes for Dr. Gregory. After each hallucination, she wakes up with fresh stains on her pillow because that's where Gabriel had pushed his way out. When Madison uses the bathroom at the police station, we can see the back of her head in the mirror. Is it just me or is there something mysterious about the dark parts in her hair right here? Kiff, I'm asking you a question. After escaping from Detective Shaw, it becomes more clear that he's running backwards, and he continually inverts himself when he's fleeing down the fire escape. The scene reminds me a lot of John Doe's escape in Sasevena, which makes me think that James Wan was probably also inspired by fellow director David Fincher. The biggest Fincher connection, though, is in Malignant's soundtrack. 
There will be major spoilers for Fight Club, so if you haven't seen it, skip to the end of this chapter. Fight Club has a somewhat similar twist ending. The main character has a split personality, and at the end, he purges him by killing off the second personality. In Malignant, the voice in Madison's head is more of a literal person, but she defeats him by locking him away in her mind. Fight Club famously ends with the song Where Is My Mind by the Pixies. Like, if you look up the song on YouTube, the top comments are all about Fight Club. The two are that intertwined. The song we hear over and over again during the transitions in Malignant is clearly inspired by Where Is My Mind. It seems to be a little clue from James Wan that Malignant shares more than one thing in common with Fight Club. But as I mentioned, the biggest source of inspiration seems to come from Giallo, an Italian genre of mystery thriller horror stories, primarily in the 60s and 70s. The way Gabriel fashions himself is very much like a typical Giallo villain, but I'll save that for when I cover Gabriel on horror history. But there are other examples though, like when the TV turns on and the first thing we hear sounds like an Italian film. Dr. Weaver keeps her records in Bellagio Italia binders. When Gabriel comes for Dr. Fields at his apartment, the place is illuminated in red and neon lights. Colorful neon lighting is a hallmark of Giallo film, and they often depict a clash of reds and blues. Along with Gabriel's silhouettes, this scene is clearly an homage. As a side note, the red light is being emitted from this sign outside, which says Silver Cup. Silver Cup is a production facility in New York City. I'm guessing parts of Malignant were filmed there, but as for this sign, it's not quite the same as the real life sign. So I'm guessing they created that in a sound studio. In the movie, Silver Cup is an apartment complex, not a production studio. Interestingly, Silver Cup was also a working title for Malignant. It's not a very big part of the story, so I'm guessing it was just used early on to hide what the movie might really be about. But the scene across from the Silver Cup sign also shares a huge similarity with another horror film from James Wan's filmography. The way that Gabriel appears from the open window in Dr. Field's apartment is very reminiscent of another James Wan villain appearance, this one in a motel during his 2007 film Dead Silence. The antagonist, Mary Shaw, appears in front of the flowing curtain, illuminated only by the buzzing neon sign across the way. In fact, when Madison sees the vision of Dr. Field's fate, the red light flickers in a very similar manner to the Mary Shaw encounter. That brings me to my next Wan connection. The name Shaw comes up a lot in his work, whether it's Dead Silence's Mary Shaw, Malignant's detective Kokoa Shaw, or even Furious 7's Deckard Shaw and Owen Shaw. Although Owen Shaw did appear in the previous film, Fast and Furious 6, which James Wan was not involved with, and technically Deckard Shaw did too, but he only appeared in the end credits, so he's mostly a Furious 7 character. Speaking of non-horror movies directed by Wan, his previous effort before Malignant was called Aquaman. Yeah, they literally made a movie out of Aquaman. Fame led to book deals, movie appearances, and hit records. I guess Detective Shaw must be a fan. When he's playing the video on his laptop, the Aquaman logo appears in the bottom corner of the screen. It's not there before. His first name is also Kikoa. The actor who plays the young version of Aquaman is named Kikoa Kekamanu, so there's definitely a reference there. There might also be a Saw connection with him. He's part of an Asian slash black detective duo. I can't help but wonder if this is a nod to detectives Sing and Tap from the original Saw. Normally I don't talk about actor cameos, but I do find it a little bit interesting that both the young and old versions of Madison are played by actresses from the Annabelle movies, which are produced by James Wan as part of his Conjuring franchise. Before I talk about the significance behind the character names, there are a few more points that I'd like to mention, so might as well do them here. The first tape we see from Dr. Weaver has a time code at the top, and once it gets to 11.59, it just resets back to 11 instead of moving on to 12. Probably just a glitch that no one noticed, I just found it kind of weird. Then, also in the opening sequence, when Gabriel is rampaging, there's a child's picture on the wall depicting thunderclouds and lightning. That might just be a normal day for kids in Seattle, but it could be connected to Gabriel's ability to manipulate electricity. Then, during the second break-in that isn't really a break-in, the camera circles around Madison, and we see both sides of her head. This is a great setup for the big reveal of Gabriel, and it makes his presence even more shocking. Blaming everything on an evil twin is one of the oldest excuses in the book, but I guess this is one of those rare times where it's also actually the truth. Sydney drives a Toyota Prius, which is a hybrid vehicle. Madison later drives this car as well. Madison could be considered a hybrid of Gabriel and Emily May. Honestly, it's probably just product placement. I also thought that maybe the fact that Madison and Gabriel have the same phone was a clue at one point, but then I realized literally everyone in the movie has the same phone for some reason. Okay, so I already talked about the religious implications behind the name Gabriel. So while this character is clearly linked to the supernatural, the other names in the story are named after real things found in nature. Sydney's last name is Lake. The female detective is Moss, one of the doctors is Fields, and even Shaw is an English-Scottish name, meaning one who dwells by the woods. Sydney's first name may also be an example. The name Sydney means wide meadow. And Serena's first name obviously means serene, clear, and tranquil. All words that could be used to describe nature. Also, there's a woman in jail whose name is Scorpion. That just leaves our main character, Madison Mitchell, whose birth name was Emily May. 
Madison and May are both connected. Madison traditionally means son of Matthew, while May references the goddess Maya or the family of Matthew. If for some reason someone watching the movie knew that, it could be a clue that these characters are one in the same. If you're a fan of James Wan's horror movies like Saw, Dead Silence, Insidious, and The Conjuring, then you're in luck because I have a whole playlist with my analyses on his other works, which you can find on the left. Remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell and select all notifications, and why do we always end it like this? I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.